Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you could spend a little time with me today. Well, excuse me, I'm kind of all excited there. We're going to talk about today some gross things that you're eating. Because a lot of times people will eat things and say, well, Dr. Joe, you know, I have a really good diet. I'm eating really well. And then I sit down and they, they, I have patient, all my patients write down what they're eating. And I go over it with them and I say, wow, let me tell you what's in this food. Because a lot of times manufacturers can get away with labeling things uh, sneaky. Like, for example, the word natural flavor. Natural flavor could mean natural flavor. It could mean monosodium glutamate. It could mean toxic chemicals. So natural flavor has a really broad definition. And so a lot of times companies, instead of listing something that you, they, want you, they don't want you to know is in there, they'll list it as a natural flavor. So that's just one example. We've got a lot of examples today. Uh, even things like flame retardants that are in your food. Uh, so interesting topics we're going to talk about today and why some of you may have some health issues and you can't figure out where it's coming from. How many people have that? Raise your hands. A lot of people have that issue. They can't figure out why they're sick. And once we break down their diet, once we break down their nervous system, we see if there's any pinched nerves, inevitably patients say, wow, that's amazing. In fact, one of my coworkers here just stopped me in the hall and she says, next couple of weeks, I'm ready. I'm going to be your science experiment. She goes, I believe in you. I love you. And I want you to get, get me back to health. And so we sit down and break down somebody's uh, health issues. We can usually say, okay, this is, this is causing this. This is causing this. Gluten allergies, that's a biggie. It's pretty popular now, but years ago, People couldn't figure out why they had allergy problems. So they take allergy shots and they'd, uh, uh, they'd take over-the-counter medications. And they couldn't figure out why they always had a runny nose. And then finally the research became public. Of course, we knew about this a long time ago. The research became public and, they, and people said, oh, my gosh, I have a reaction to gluten, which is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. And when I cut out my wheat, barley, and rye, suddenly my digestive system got better. My brain fog got better. My sinuses cleared up. So it's not hard to figure out a lot of these things. In fact, it's pretty easy once you know how to do it. It's just like anything else. Anybody ever drive a, a stick shift? I mean, they still have stick shifts? I don't even know. But I remember my first car ever was a van because I was cool back then. I had a van with mural on the side and wooden bumpers and mag wheels and fur interior and captain's chairs and an eight-track player. And it was a three-speed on the column, if you can remember back that far. And I remember my father taught me how to drive in the meadowlands of New Jersey and in, in, in the factory parking lots of New Jersey. And the first time I came to a hill, I thought, I'm going to be here forever. I'm going to live in my van and die in my van because there's no way I can ever get out of this van because I'm never going to make it up this hill. Over time, you can start doing it and you can, you know, now we'd have cell phones back then, but you can talk on a phone and shift gears. So there's things that you have to just learn how to do and get good at it, like playing guitar. In fact, a friend of mine, um, she's uh, 13 years old, and she had her first guitar lesson today. And she said, a little tricky. And I said, yeah, just do it over and over again and eventually get good at it. Same thing with your health. You got to do these things over and over again in order to figure out how to get it right. So I want to talk about some of the gross things that you're eating because it really has become the norm in a lot of supermarkets. Uh, packaged food ingredient lists, it's more like uh, chemistry homework. Many times I'll look at the package and go, I have no idea what that is. Well, I don't know because they, they change things. They relabel it. They, they rename it. So in a lot of cases, marketers have figured out a way to keep these toxic additives and disease-promoting foods off the label. So now it becomes your job to figure it out. So I, I mentioned flame retardants uh, in your sodas, and that's an issue. There's a toxic flame retardant. Called, uh, it's called brominated vegetable oil, or BVO, and it was initially used to keep plastics from catching fire. Now, for decades, food industry has been adding these things to certain sodas, juice, sports drinks. A lot of times you're drinking these sports drinks and you think, oh, well, I'm working out. I have to drink a sports drink. Usually not true. What are brominated vegetable oils? They keep the artificial chemicals from separating from the rest of the liquid. So they just, they're an emulsifier. Why are they bad? Scientists have linked too much brominated vegetable oil to bromine poisoning. And you can get things like skin lesions, memory loss, and nerve disorders. But here's the thing. Bromine is a haloid. Now, that's a big fancy chemical word. Haloids are bromine, chlorine, fluorine, and iodine. Well, iodine is the key word there. Your thyroid gland and other glands and other organs need iodine. It's necessary. In fact, if you ever had your uh, thyroid tested, they'll test for T1, T2, T3, and T4. Those are the hormones that are produced by the thyroid. The number, 1, 2, 3, or 4, means how many molecules of iodine are attached to that hormone. T1 is 1, T2 is 2. And so T, you have to have T4. Many times they'll give you T4 as a synthetic version. T4 has to be converted into T3, more chemistry again, in your liver. Another reason to keep your liver healthy. 
And so the conversion has to occur, but you need the iodine. Now, if you're doing things like brominated vegetable oils or chlor chlorinated water, fluorinated toothpastes, it can block up the receptor sites in your thyroid gland. And if you block up the receptor sites in the thyroid gland, you can't absorb the iodine. And so now suddenly the, the thyroid starts to become sluggish. And so many times we'll try to put you on thyroid hormones or I say we try to clean out the thyroid as well. I'm not against taking drugs. I'm not against the surgeries. But if there's a way to fix it without the surgeries, that just makes more sense to me. So if you can take out the bromine, fluorine, and chlorine out of your diet and then add iodine to your diet, because almost everyone is iodine deficient. We just don't eat enough iodine in this country. And so what's the best source of iodine? Sea vegetables, seaweeds. Now I think it's seaweed, that's disgusting. Well, if you ever ate sushi, that little wrap, that's a seaweed wrap. Dr. Joe's Supergreens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, those are two supplements I think everyone should be taking. And people all around the world have been taking them for years now, and in most cases are extremely happy with the results. Because it's the minimum amount of nutrients, it's the core nutrients that your body needs to function. And we put sea vegetables in the super greens, the essential source, to give you the best source of iodine so that your thyroid gland and other organs can work more efficiently because, I promise you, you're just not getting enough iodine. You think, well, I eat salt, and salt has iodine in it. It's iodized. That's not the best source of iodine. It's not a good form of iodine. You want to eat the purest form of iodine possible. So if you're drinking things like uh, uh, brominated vegetable oils in your sodas or your sports drinks, it can really adversely affect your, your thyroid. And if you're an athlete, you want your thyroid, well, everybody wants your thyroid working well, so you can be really being counterproductive. Folks, got to go to a break. I'm going to open up the phone lines. If you have any healthcare questions, n numbers 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, my website, if you have questions you don't want to get on the air, you can send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And you can also order Dr. Joe Super Greens, Essential Source, other supplements, books, all on the website, drjoesposito.com. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. Good show today. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, glad you could be here. I am Dr. Joe Esposito, and we're talking today about some really gross things that you're eating on a regular basis, and you don't even know they're there. Because sometimes manufacturers can hide uh, the, the bad words with, with uh, pretty, like, uh, gentle, innocuous words. And you go, oh, that sounds like it's okay. I, you know, natural flavoring sounds good. I guess I'll eat that. Um, and so I want you to understand when you read the label what that all means. Uh, paint chemicals found in your salad dressing. How about that one? Titanium dioxide. Now, I've talked about titanium dioxide before when I did a show on sunscreen several months ago. Titanium dioxide, it's a component of the, of, of the metallic element titanium. It's, it's, it's a mine substance that is sometimes contaminated with lead. So we get lead in the body. Lead is a heavy metal. And when heavy metals get in the body, that's not a good thing. So it's commonly used in paints and sunscreens. But big food corporations use it a lot, including things like processed salad dressings, coffee creamers, and icing. Now, why would we want to put a heavy metal in our coffee creamer? The food industry adds hundreds of these products to make these dingy, overly processed items appear white. It's white. So when you put uh, sunscreen on it, it's white, and then it gets dissolved. But many times it's what's called nanoparticles. They make it so small that the titanium dioxide can be absorbed directly into your skin. And when it gets into the body, it can cause some real serious problems. That's why if you're going to use a sunscreen, I recommend zinc oxide. And one way you can tell it's a good sunscreen is when you put it on, it doesn't just disappear. You kind of have to rub it, and it leaves a little white film. That's the zinc oxide actually acting as a physical barrier against the sun. So that's a much better sunscreen, a lot less toxic. So white is a, it's a symbolic color. It makes things look clean and fresh. So it's funny. When you eat real food, you don't need to add a lot of these crazy additives. And so if something isn't perfect... That's okay. In fact, even look at tomatoes, what we've done to tomatoes in my lifetime. We have now heirloom tomatoes. Heirloom tomatoes, if you ever see them, are ugly. They're not very pretty. And if you buy even organic ones, they're round, they're pretty, they're perfect. So we've hybridized our food to make it look pretty. But that doesn't mean it's good for us. Uh, if you ever had an heirloom tomato, they taste like something you may have never tasted before. They taste like tomatoes. I stopped eating tomatoes for years. Because they didn't even taste, even the organic ones. I grow my own or I buy uh, the heirloom. So that's the only way I'll eat tomatoes because I, I, I grew up with these delicious tomatoes. My grandfather, uh, Grandpa Jimmy Esposito, he had a house in Bud Lake, New Jersey. And he had this huge garden. All the old Italians had big gardens back then. 
And he grew these tomatoes, two pounders, three pound tomatoes, one tomato. Like, what is he doing? So after he passed away, uh, my my he had ten kids, eight brothers, two. Eight, my father had there were eight boys and two girls in the family. They tried to keep the garden going for a while, but of course, you know, things faded out. But when they were turning over the garden, they hit a piece of metal. Couldn't figure out what it was. So they lifted up the uh, the metal grate. It was the septic tank. So the nitrogen and all the, to- the, the waste products were fertilizing that soil that made these monster tomatoes. Pretty gross. However, they were organic and they tasted great. And also, on that topic, a lot of non-organic veg- uh, vegetables are fertilized with human sludge. So you think it's gross, you're probably eating things that are fertilized with human sludge anyway. It's pretty nasty. Folks, if you have a healthcare question, I'm going to open up the phone lines, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. That number, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. So in case you need to call me for any reason, you can remember 844-44-DR-JOE. In case you're driving, don't want you to you know, write something down and get in an accident. Just remember 844-44-DR-JOE, and then when you pull over, you can do that. So we're talking today about gross foods, things that you're eating that are really nasty gross. How about maggots in your mushrooms? Actually, maggots in a lot of your foods. Maggots are fly larvae. So when a fly lays the eggs, the larvae are the tiny little flies. And they're kind of rice-shaped, and they, they feast on rotting foods. And so the Food and Drug Administration legally allows— You know, i got to do a show on this, Ahmad. That, that reminds me. I, I have—I I had this. i, I got to get a new one. It, it's legal uh, allow, allowable levels of contaminants in food. And we talk about rat hairs and feces and stuff like that and how much food is allowed, how much toxins are allowed uh, in certain foods. Like hot dogs are really, really bad. But anyway, Food and Drug Administration legally allows 19 maggots and 74 mites in a 3.5 ounce can of mushrooms. So while the maggots, uh, they find their, they have places in the medical world. In fact, what happens is they can help heal wounds and ulcers. And it's been theorized that uh, in olden day, when there was war, if somebody was wounded, the, the soldiers that had maggots in the wounds did better than the ones who didn't have maggots in the wounds because the maggots got in there and ate the dead flesh and prevented infections from spreading. But that's here nor there. It's still pretty gross. Now, most people think it's pretty gross to eat maggots. Eh, you're probably right. In fact, I, uh, one of the lectures I used to give a long time ago was my original version of what I call, now call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And I, I called it unplug your freezer. And one of the things I talk about is if you buy some meat, take some meat and put it in a cooler, and you've probably all done this at one point or another, if you leave it in a cooler outside or unplug your freezer, I used to joke about, don't really do that because you'll you know, get a lot of people mad at you. But if you left meat in a cooler outside and you kept it sealed, airtight, nothing got in or out, and you opened it up, after several days, the meat would rot and it would stink, but you'd also have visitors in there in most cases. And those visitors were maggots and worms. Well, if the cooler's sealed and nothing gets in or out, where'd the maggots and the worms come from? They're in the meat. And you ate the meat. And so that's a big problem there if you don't like eating maggots and worms. Now, in a weird twist, it's probably not that bad for you. Maybe the healthiest part of a lot of, a lot of people's diets. <laughs> Mod's laughing in there. It's, it's maybe the most healthiest part of a lot of people's diets, the maggots and the worms. But it is pretty gross, and that's what we're talking about today, gross foods that you're eating. So let's go to callers. If you have a question, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. And how can we make your day better? Yeah, I just have a question about MRSA. I've been in the medical field 30 years, and I guess there's medical and there's chronic. Yes. And I was curious on, I know that you can have outbreaks that are highly contagious, but you mm-hmm. always carry it. Can you ever get rid of it? Uh, the answer is I don't know that answer, but I know what to do if I had it. How about we take it from there? Because it may hide That'll in your work. body. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in fact, okay. it's one. Of, it's on my topics. It's on my show notes, actually. So you're reading my mind. Wow. Man. Little freaky. Wow. You're reading my mind. <laughs> And what I was going to cover is that a lot of times things like MRSA, they become antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Well, why do bacteria become antibiotic-resistant? Because we've been using antibiotics so often, and not just in medicine, but we use it in things like food, meats and dairy products. Many times we use antibiotics. And when people take it uh, in their food, it creates a weakness uh, in their immune system because, because it kills off good and bad bacteria, but the bacteria now can mutate. And that's what MRSA is. It becomes resistant. And so the way to do this is keep your immune system as strong as possible always. And we do that by avoiding sugars, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, 
Uh, you can do things to stimulate the immune system. Uh, olive leaf extract, garlic is good. Onions are good. So by eating a plant-based diet, as I got to go to break, a plant-based diet is going to be the best thing you can do to keep your immune system strong. Okay? And I'll cover this again a little later, Ann. So thanks for calling. Folks, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, if you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, my books, other supplements, intestinal cleanser, cold and flu tonic are going to be back in. I know a lot of you missed that. It's coming back in again in a couple of weeks. Uh, those are on the website and archive radio shows. And if you have any questions, you can always send them through the website, drjoesposito.com. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. The show, don't go anywhere. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you could be here. Uh, what we're talking about today are gross things that you're eating every single day. And a lot of people do this, and they don't realize it. And we already talked about things like uh, brominated vegetable oil. Brominated vegetable oil has something called bromine. And bromine is a, what's called a haloid. It can block up your iodine receptor sites in your thyroid. And we have a caller, Vanessa. Keep holding, Vanessa. I'm going to answer that question for you about thyroid gland. And it can block up the thyroid gland and, pr and cause some problems. Uh, we talked about titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is uh, whitening. It makes things white and pretty, but that's not a good idea because it can get into the body and cause all sorts of problems. We talked about maggots in your mushrooms. Now, that's in canned mushrooms. Now, if you eat canned mushrooms, the problem is not just the maggots, which, again, aren't really going to kill you. They're just pretty gross. But the, the cans most likely are lined with something called bisphenol A or BPA. And BPA is a, it's a plastic chemical that causes hormone imbalances, and it can be linked to things like heart attack, heart attacks, obesity, and even certain types of cancer. Because what it does is acts like estrogen. It stimulates your estrogen receptor sites. And a lot of cancers are estrogen uh, sensitive. And so you can actually cause the cells to grow abnormally because estrogen is a growth hormone. So the problem, once again, we'll talk about, talk about the old days, we used to have to scrape the cans out when you had something canned. And now you'll notice everything slides out real smoothly. I used to work as a pizza deliverer after I graduated college. I used to see patients during the day and at night deliver pizza because I had no patients. I had to get some way to pay my rent. And I was always afraid I'd deliver a pizza to a patient and say, hey, Mrs. Johnson, uh, here's your pizza. I'll uh, see you Tuesday for your appointment. You know? Luckily, I never did. I, I, I had no patients, not, so I didn't really have to worry about running into people I knew. Um, but I remember we used to have this big spatula and we'd scoop out the sauce out of the cans for the tomato, pay, the tomato sauce. And now it slides out. And that's because of bisphenol A. And so many companies use bisphenol A. So the only way you're probably going to get around it is some organic companies don't use it. But if you can avoid canned foods, that's all the better, too. Let's go back to the callers. All right, Vanessa, how can we make your day better? Hi. Um, I, have a I have been diagnosed with hypothyroid as well as hyperthyroid. It yes. swings depending on my, um, I guess, the antibodies. Uh-huh. So I am just looking for... Um, a solution to avoid having my thyroid removed. Well, I like that idea. Yeah, thyroid's a tricky one, and thyroid's a big issue. A lot of people have it. And did they ever explain to you why or how you can become hyper and hypo at the same time? Um, they just said the, at the antibodies. Okay, That's yeah. what I was said, the antibodies. What usually happens is, and, and, and every case is different, of course, but the thyroid becomes hyperactive because it's trying to pump out more thyroid hormones. And unless right. you have an actual disease or, you, you know, it could be an autoimmune disease. But either way, the thyroid becomes hyperactive and then it starts to basically burn out. So it goes from hyperactive to hypoactive. And chances are you're right in that transition period where your hyperthyroid is now becoming hypothyroid. Sometimes you'll see people that they can eat anything and they're skinny. And then all of a sudden, boom, they blow up like a balloon. They went right. from hyperthyroid to hypothyroid. So a couple of things I would suggest. Number one is absolutely positively stay away from all the haloids, bromine, fluorine, chlorine. So I would get a really good water filter for your house. I, I have a whole house water filter, um, but at least get some for under your sink. We have some on my website if you don't know what to get. We've got some on my website for sink, uh, under sink uh, 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 water filters. Get that chlorine and fluorine out of your diet. I would never use a fluorinated toothpaste ever under any circumstances because fluorine is a toxic poison. And when you brush your teeth, you're going to swallow it. And when you swallow it, that's when it becomes a problem. Uh, okay. I would definitely talk, uh, check to see if you need more iodine. Chances are you do, because chances are you're not getting any iodine in your diet. And that's well, the why. The product that I take does have iodine in it. Oh, it has, good. like the natural form of iodine in it. Excellent. Okay, good. So you are getting some <laughs> iodine. So that's one problem right. solved. Good. Uh, another thing I find as a chiropractor is I find the bones in the neck, the, right in the middle of the neck, that's the nerve supply that goes into the thyroid. 
So as part of a thyroid protocol, I always like to check the patient's spine to make sure there's no pinched nerves going to the thyroid. Then we get them on some thyroid supplements. Okay, there's a supplement called thyrotropin that many times I'll use for my patients, and it nourishes the thyroid gland specifically. Uh, it's from a company called Standard Process, and they don't sell to the public. They only sell to doctors or healthcare professionals. And mm-hmm. so I would put you on a thyroid protocol as well. And then, I'd, of course, you generally straighten out your diet because if your body is in an autoimmune uh, reaction, it's attacking the body, it becomes a problem. If something's in your body that your body can't get rid of, like, for example, heavy metals, aluminum, mercury, the immune system is constantly attacking this aluminum and mercury and other heavy metals, but it can't, doesn't do anything. It's like hitting, it's hitting a heavy metal. And so the immune system keeps becoming hyperactive when your body's exposed to these. So another thing I might consider for you, Vanessa, is do a hair analysis. We do those in our office. And we can do just a real simple, you cut a couple of strands of hair, send it off to the lab, and we see if you do have any heavy metal toxicity. And if you do, then we have to talk about a heavy metal detox, trying to get the heavy metals out of the system to calm down the hyperactive immune system. So there's several things we can do to work on the thyroid, but I, if you're serious about wanting to, to save it, I would do everything I possibly could um, uh, as far as that goes. Have you ever heard of um, the theory of having like Epstein-Barr, it causes Hashimoto's disease? Well, it's a, a, the Epstein-Barr virus, the immune system goes crazy. The immune system starts attacking the Epstein-Barr. Is it really the immune system attacking the Epstein-Barr? Is the Epstein-Barr getting into the thyroid? No one's really sure about it. But either way, mm-hmm. if we build up the immune system, we can fight off the viral issues. And so a lot of times we do that by keeping the liver clean because the liver, if the liver's dirty, the whole body's out of whack. So we got to check that as well and make sure the liver's cleaned up. So the answer is yes, I've heard of it. There's a couple of different mechanisms. We think it may, be ha- may happen when it occurs. But either way, my world, what I would do is the same thing. It doesn't change. Make sense? Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I guess I've not really taken the chiropractor approach to it. So yeah, um, just, I guess it's worth looking into. Yeah, it's worth And, you know, then I always tell people, listen, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? I'm wrong. But if I'm right, which I usually am, then you can say, wow, that really worked. That was really cool, and so many of our patients are just thrilled. And the biggest complaint I get from my patients, and I've been, do, I've been in practice now for 32 years. I've missed a half a day of work in 32 years. Patients say, why didn't I do this sooner? And even a lot of doctors listen to my show. Um, fo- doctors, if you're listening, thank you so much for your referrals. I never get to thank my doctors for the referrals. They send their patients to us all the time going, I don't know what to do. You take a look at them and see. And I love co-managing the cases. So I'm not saying don't do the medical approach. Let's do it together as right. a team to try to get you well. Well, right. Yeah, I'm doing the medical approach as well as I do like a um, nutritional approach with the nutritionist right now. Perfect. Yeah. And I would add the supplements. I'd look at the chiropractic, um, see if there's any, you know, get the chlorine, fluorine, and bromine out of the diet. So there's a lot of different steps you can take. And the nice part is all these steps are positive. All these things are for the good, not for the bad. I don't see a downside to clean, to drinking pure water, you know, to getting a good source of iodine. So I think it'd be a good approach for everyone, not just for thyroid Mm -hmm. patients, but for everyone. Fair enough? Yeah, fair enough. All right, great. Thanks, Vanessa. I appreciate it. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have a question, you can give us a call. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, if you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which I think you should, by the way, drjoesposito.com. They're also available on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, uh, you can order Super Greens, Essential Source. My cold and flu tonics are coming out soon. My intestinal cleanser, my books, All on the website. We archive our radio shows on the website. No charge. Hey, listen, I got a lot of lectures coming up, too. Check my website. If I'm lecturing in your area, love to have you come out to the live lectures because they are fun. And I put those on my YouTube channel through my website so you can watch a lot of those live lectures, too. Hey, folks, DrJoeEsposito.com. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Um, Don't go anywhere. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you could spend a little time with me today. What we're talking about today are really gross things that you're eating pretty much every day. And you don't realize it. And sometimes it's just gross. It just has a high gross factor. Sometimes they're actually toxic. Many times they're toxic for you. And I want you to consider not eating these foods because it's, this is a journey. This, there's no destination to the health care plan, uh, what we call Joe Obamacare. There's uh, a journey but not a destination. And the journey is a lot of fun because when you start exploring new things, you say, I like this. Oh, this is what it feels like to have energy. Oh, this is what it feels like not to have acid reflux or gas or bloating or diarrhea, constipation or headaches or brain fog. And now suddenly a whole new world opens up to you. And you said, oh, I did this one little step. I can do this and I can do the next one. I can do the next one. You can do it. 
Does it work? Yeah, it works. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to do and uh, how dedicated you're willing to be. And many times it just takes a little kick in the fanny. Oh, I did this. I feel better. I drank water. Wow, I felt better when I drank water. And then I started adding maybe Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Oh, my gosh, what a change that made. In fact, I had somebody call me the other day, and she said, Dr. Joe, I got my husband to get you Super Greens and Essential Source. He's taken it for about four days, and he hasn't seen any changes yet, so he's going to stop taking it. She goes, I need to talk him into staying with it. And I said, yeah, this is not something, if, if, depending how toxic somebody is and how bad their diet has been, is going to determine how quickly the body turns around. So, yeah, it's going to may take a, more than a few days to make a change, like chiropractic care or exercise or dieting. You can't just do it for a couple of days. I went to the gym. I didn't get biceps. You know, I'm not going to go anymore. My biceps didn't grow. It, sometimes it takes a little time to change the body, but the, 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 it's always going to work. You just got to do it. So another thing I want to talk about, if you're on hold, folks, keep holding on. I know a lot of you got questions there. A uh, cloned cow stomach. How many of you would like to eat cloned cow stomach? Does that sound like something you'd like to add to your diet? Well, this is interesting. Cheesemakers use something called rennet which is derived from the mucosa of veal calf's fourth stomach to create the versatile dairy product. They add rennet, they scrape baby cow stomachs basically out, and that's what they add to the dairy to make cheese in many cases. The cost and the limited availability of cow stomachs has led to the development of some alternatives. Now, there's a vegetable rennet that exists, a little more expensive. There's a microbial rennet. And the, farm industry, the food industry's rennet of choice is a genetically modified version of a derived from cloned calf stomach. So now we're taking GMO, genetically modified organisms, and growing them in a laboratory, cow stomach, so you can get your beloved cheese. Now, it used to make the vast majority of cheeses sold in the United States would have this in it, and it still is that way. And unless you're seeing a vegetable rennet, chances are it's cloned cow stomach or actual cow stomach. Long-term health effects of eating genetically engineered foods. Really, the studies have, are, have been out for a while, but we don't have the really extended long-term studies. The studies that I've read, every one of them, every independent study, keyword there is independent study, it scares the heck out of me. Genetically modified foods are scary, and I believe we've opened up Pandora's box, and I'm not sure we can ever close it again. We've created genetically modified food, genetically modified animals. We created genetically modified uh, salmon. In fact, I was in a store the other day, and they had these monster salmon. Oh, my gosh. They're like whales. And uh, the lady was you know, handing out samples, and she would like sample. I said, no, I don't eat animal products. I'm a vegan. And I said, those certainly look like genetically modified salmon. And she rolls her eyes. She goes, well, I can't say anything bad because I work here. She says, but these things scare me. Because what they've done is they've grown these monster mega salmon, and they're cheap. And they say, well, it's never going to get into the wild. Don't worry. It's never going to get into the wild. We're going to keep them in pens. But sooner or later, some, some salmon are going to get rogue. Somebody's going to throw them in the ocean just because they're mad at their boss or something. And the problem is that they're cannibals. They'll eat other salmon. They're very aggressive, so they'll mate with other salmon and eventually have this altered genetic Frankenstein salmon out there. And it's actually a reality, a potential reality, that we may be the last generation to ever see real salmon. Because once these things get loose, and they will, I don't know how, not supposed to, but they will, it's going to really mess with our salmon supply. And it's not even pink, it's, it's gray, and they have to dye it to make it pink. And so I digress here with GMOs, but genetically modified foods really scare me. And since GMO ingredients aren't listed on the label, it can be tough for you, the consumer, to avoid rennet, that's genetically modified. Rennet is the, the cow stomach that we use to make cheese, if you're just joining us. With all these rennet varieties often listed as enzymes on the ingredient label, it can be really hard to know exactly what you're uh, eating when you buy your cheese. So here's the thing. If you do eat dairy products or meat or any animal products, I'm going to recommend you do organic only. And the reason is if you do organic only, you're going to avoid a lot of the steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods. Since the 1980s, the food supply has changed dramatically in our country. And that's when a lot of GMOs came out. That we started using glyphosate, which is a weed killer. And it's really messing with a lot of people's health. And it kind of ties in nicely with our next caller. Israel, how can we make your day better? Israel, you there? I'm here. Yes, how can I help you? How are you doing? I'm wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for taking my call. All right, go ahead. What's up? Well, um, interesting you say that. Um, long story short, I became a diabetic 
um, some number of years ago, and my kidneys ended up failing, and now I'm on dialysis, and I am trying to figure out what I can do to reverse being on dialysis homeopathically, sure. because of course when you go to the regular, you know, nephrologist or any other medical doctor, they'll tell you the only right. solution they can offer right. is dialysis or a right. kidney, which sure. would result in you being on immune suppressors, which. Right. I'm still young enough that I could have children someday. I'd like to be able to do that without okay. compromising my child. So. Uh, okay, we're, we're, we're cutting close on time here, Israel. So let, let, let me throw out an answer for you here, okay? When I first got in practice 32 years ago, I never saw kidney patients. I don't know, decades I didn't see kidney patients. Now I'm seeing kidney patients multiple on a weekly basis. So something is happening to cause all these new kidney conditions. Now, I don't know what it is. I'll be honest with you. But you are not alone. I see kidney patients. In fact, the next caller also has a question about kidneys. I mean, that's how common it is. I've got two callers in a row about kidneys. So I can't promise we can fix you, but a couple of things I'm going to recommend. You want to stay away from really heavy proteins, animal products especially. Animal products are really hard to digest and can really put a strain on the kidneys. Second thing is a more plant-based diet because you want to get something called enzymes in your diet. Enzymes break down food. They reassemble food. They fight infection. They fight inflammation. And hopefully that can help a little bit of the healing process go on. Now, again, I'm not saying I can cure your kidney problems. but um, And also then things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source might be a good choice too. Israel, if you could hold on, I'm going to take you off the air, okay, because i got a few more things i got to talk to you about. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. You can order supplements there, also available on Amazon. Uh, send me questions, listen to radio shows, watch videos. We want to be your doctors. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Here. Hey, don't go anywhere. Hey, folks, glad you could be here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Nice to spend a little time with you today. What we're talking about today, kind of a fun, fun show today, are the grossest things that you're eating. And you're eating some pretty gross things that you don't even know about. And if you knew what they were, you probably wouldn't be eating them. But some of them are toxic, and some of them are just downright gross, but not really going to make you sick unless you knew what they were. And it was funny. I saw a, a thing on the Internet, and they did an experiment, and they brought people in and said it was going to be a food tasting, you know, the, the uh, focus group. And they, they had these containers, and it said dog milk on it. And it was cow's milk. And they said it was dog milk. And everybody was gagging and choking, and they just couldn't eat. Oh, my God, it's so gross. It, it was cow's milk. And then the question is, well, I don't know. I never drank dog's milk, but why would that be grosser than cow's milk? I don't know. But it's perception. If you Once you know what's in it, you're probably not going to eat it. And people ask me all the time, so Dr. Joe, you, I haven't had animal products in over 30 years. I've been a vegan for over 30 years. I was cool before it was cool. And they say, well, do you miss these things? And I said, if you knew what I knew, you would do what I do. And that's really a profound statement because if you knew what I knew about healthcare, about how the nervous system works, how the digestive system works, how the brain works, you wouldn't be doing the things to yourself. And that's why I try to teach my patients, listen, if I can give you enough uh, cranial stimulation, if I can give you enough knowledge so you understand why not to do these things, then hopefully you'll make the right decisions. And a lot of people do. You know, Dr. Joe, I listen to your shows. I watch your videos online. By the way, my website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, lots of good information there. I archive hundreds of hours of radio shows, videotape my live lectures if you like watching videos, uh, podcasts, all on the website, all no charge. Because we try, and I'm going to be putting out a lot more, by the way. That's our new goal in the upcoming weeks is to try to put out even maybe a video a day if possible, me and my team of doctors. Because there's so much information I want to share with you guys because I want you to take control of your own health. And we're going to make it at this point no charge so that you can watch a little bit every day. And that's another thing, too. Sign up for my newsletter. It's right on the front page of my website, and we'll send out newsletters. We'll send out the videos once we start putting them out, uh, announce when I'm lecturing. I have a lot of lectures coming up. Love to have you come out to the live lectures. They're a lot of fun. A lot of times companies hire me, so I can't invite you to those lectures, but the public ones, I'd love to have you come out because I can show you things I can't show you on the on radio because so much of healthcare is physical, not chemical, and we keep treating it chemically. If you have headaches, many times it's a pinched nerve in your neck and you're trying to take aspirin. I have no problem with you taking aspirin. But why do you have the headache is the question. If you have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual problems, could be a pinched nerve in the low back. That's the nerve that controls your colon, sex organs, and bladder, as well as your back, hips, legs, knees, and ankles. 
So you might have back pain thinking, well, that's the thing I have to go fix is the back pain. And when you come see us, I'll tell you, I don't want to fix your back pain. I want to fix the cause of your back pain because the cause of the back pain is probably causing other things as well. Let's go back to the callers. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. Francisco, how can we make your day better? Okay, I'm trying to help a friend. Um, she's got lupus. She's got she's on dialysis three times a week. She's bipolar, and on her lower back, the first, the second, and the third one vertebrae uh, they are almost fused together, and she refused to to eat certain vegetables or fruits uh, because they got a lot of potassium. Right, and that's the problem with kidney is is you're kind of in a catch twenty two is. Uh, too much potassium can affect the kidneys, but the kidneys need the body. The body, rest of the body needs the potassium and the nutrients as well, because the way the nervous right. system works is you have sodium and potassium, uh, one inside the cell, one outside the cell in the nervous system, and they switch back and forth. And when they switch back and forth, they create what's called an action potential or a nerve potential, and that's why your nerves work. The nerve fire it creates its own electricity. So with the kidney problems, you don't want to have too much of the any too much of anything, but you don't get enough potassium sometimes, so that affects the nervous system, which then affects the kidneys. So a couple of things I'd recommend for her. Number one, if she has bipolar, chances are she's got a digestive problem. Acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. Because the stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in the brain, and serotonin is the neurotransmitter that helps with depression and bipolar. So the reason the brain is not working properly is it doesn't have the right chemicals to work properly, and in many cases, it goes back to the digestive system just not breaking down food properly. So you might want to consider that. Ask her if she has that, and if she does, go to my website which is drjoesposito.com, and uh, under, a, I think it's under blog, you'll read, they'll say Dr. Joe's articles. I think it's the sixth or seventh article down. I wrote an article on gastroesophageal reflux disease. Really clearly okay. explains how the body works and how it affects the brain. So I would check the digestive system. Um, find out what, like I said, the other caller, find out what vegetables and fruits she can eat, and then she has to eat those. Um, and then she could check with her doctor about the super greens and the essential source. What I normally do is I'll tell people to take it, but tell their doctor they're taking it so they can monitor uh, the kidney issue. And then you always got to mm-hmm. check the nerves. If she's got a pinched nerve in her, in her mid-back, the nerve in the mid-back controls the kidneys. Right. So she could have a pinched nerve affecting the kidneys and the nutrients and the digestive problems. And I would stay away from animal proteins for her because they're really hard to digest. I'd put her on plant proteins. And if she needs to, okay. you can even get uh, plant protein powders. Sometimes it's chia seeds, hemp seeds, things like that. They work really well um, as a protein powder. If she needs more protein, uh, I would stay away from the animal protein. So there's several things that she can do, and, and doing anything is better than what she's doing right now. And I think if she does all of them, she should be pretty happy with the results. What about, just last question real quick, what about with the lupus? She has really, really dry skin, almost like a paper. Sure. What, skin. Extra virgin coconut oil. Get some extra virgin organic coconut oil and rub it all over the, the skin several times a day, four, five, six times a day if she wants to. It absorbs really quickly. And many times mm-hmm. that helps to hydrate the skin from the outside in. And she can even eat about a tablespoon or two of coconut oil. That can help her immune system with the lupus, and it'll help the skin mm-hmm. hopefully as well. Okay? Thank you so much. Thanks Dr. so much. I appreciate it. And, folks, if you have a question, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. And, you know, we talked about the animal proteins and some people, of course, uh, with kidney patients, it's it's a little tricky because you need certain things. You, the rest of the body needs it, but it's a strain on the kidneys. And so you're kind of in a catch 22. So my advice for you is this. Get healthy before you get sick. And if you get healthy before you get sick, you're less likely to get sick. And you get healthy by having a normally functioning nervous system because the nerves control everything. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, chances are it's a pinched nerve. And chances are it's easy to fix. Put the bones back in place, unpinch the nerve, and that helps. And as chiropractors, that's what my team of doctors do all day, every day. From a nutrition standpoint, at least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. If you have a medical condition, we can talk about that. Just email me or or call me. And then you got to make sure the digestive system is working. And eat more plants, and you should be pretty happy. Folks, if you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, if you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, books, send me questions, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Also, the stu- uh, my products are also available on Amazon. Hey, don't go anywhere. i got to go to a break. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. 
Hey, folks, glad you could be here today. Thank you so much. And thanks for telling your friends about the show, by the way, too, because I, I want to uh, I watch my Facebook page and um, uh, my Instagram account as well. And you guys are obviously telling your friends about it because we're constantly getting uh, likes and followers on Facebook and Instagram. And the reason I want you to do that is, is a, I want you to do it. But we, when, if we have a live lecture, I'll send out information about my live lectures. If we have specials about products, if we have a new article, breaking news in healthcare, we send that out to the folks that are following us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, sign up for my newsletter. It's on the website right there on the front page, drjoesposito.com. And when you do that, I'm going to send you a thank you gift. I'm going to send you a link to a lecture called, So What Can I Eat? Because the biggest question I get is after people after people finally get that they need to change their diet, they need to get their spines working properly, they say, what can I eat? I'm willing to do it. Now tell me what to do, and I'll send you that link. It's absolutely no charge. Just sign up for my newsletter, and the website is drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, and there I am, Dr. Joe Esposito. Pops right up there. Let's take some callers here. And remember what I just say? Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. I want to make sure we cover that. Maria, how can we make your day better? Well, I was just calling to tell you how much I love your cookbook, Eating Right for the Health of It. Ah. <laughs> it's wonderful. Ah, tell me more. Tell me more. Okay. Well, I'm single. I live by myself. So I have to have things that are easy and, and nutritious and easy to make, right, and relatively fast. And you have that in your cookbook. And I made the fried rice out of your cookbook, uh-huh. and I made it to take to an event. Right. And I made a lot of it. And I'm like, oh, there'll be some left over. No, there was not a drop left Wonderful. over for me to bring home. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, that's the cool part. <laughs> not the re- a drop. I know. I love that. Well, the reason I wrote that book is people kept saying to me, so what can I eat? So I said, they said, what did you eat? So I had this, I had this. And eventually it evolved into the book. And the first half of the book, it's called Eating Right for the Health of It, tells you how to change your diet. The second half of the book is just well over 200 recipes. And I tried to make it easy, quick, uh, inexpensive. And it's, we've sold, I don't know how many tens of thousands of copies already. And the response is just like what you're saying, Maria. It's quick. It's easy. It's fun. And what's cool is when you make things as the holiday season comes around, you make things from the book and you bring it. And inevitably, that's the thing that's going to go first because it's not the usual shrimp tray and it's not the usual hummus with celery. It's something different and it's tasty and people just love it. So I'm really glad you're happy with it. Yeah, I love it. I Great. just want you to know. Thanks, Maria. I <laughs> Thank appreciate you. the kind words. Thanks so much. And that's my first book. My second book is called Eating Right for the Health of It. If you don't have a copy of that, you should get it. And that tells you why to change your diet. It really is, it's, it's like an owner's manual for your body. It tells you how to take care of the nervous system, the digestive system, your diet, uh, what to eat, what not to eat. Uh, we talk about the digestive, the heart, acid reflux and the heartburn, how the stomach controls so much of the brain function, the emotional function. And so we want to get your diet straightened out, but we want to get the nervous system working as well. And as a chiropractor, that's what my team of doctors do. And folks come see us from all over the world because they say, I've never heard it put down like that before. And I love when doctors call me up and you say, you know, Joe, what you do just makes sense. I've never looked at it like that before. And these are doctors that have studied all their whole lives, but they never put it all together. We call it functional medicine. That's a fancy word that came out several years ago. Functional medicine is what do I do with it? All right, I understand something's wrong with the thyroid. What do I do about it? I understand I have acid reflux. Can I pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm? The answer is yes in most cases. So the functional part of it, and I'm not a medical doctor, so it's, not, it's just the term functional medicine, is I try to teach you how to take care of yourself, and then what you need help with, we step in and kind of help you out as well. So that's why the books are so popular. Uh, the videos, the YouTube channel just blows up every time I look at it, and we add new lectures to it all the time. And like I said, we've got a bunch of lectures coming up, and I'd love to have you come out to them for the live events. That's on the website as well. And we usually videotape those if you can't make it and put those on the website as well. And uh, a lot of companies, when they hire me, they'll let me videotape it as well. In fact, I did a lecture here at my radio station, and they videotaped it and put it on the website too. So we're talking today about really gross things that you're eating. And somebody called up a while ago about MRSA, MRSA infections, staph infections. And grocery store meats are commonly infused with veterinary medicines, heavy metals, and staph bacteria. And a lot of these are hard to kill, potentially lethal MRSA strain of the bacteria. And it's in the meat. It's there. And unfortunately, the problem isn't that real. It's not really that rare. A published study last year, uh, a study published last year in the Journal of Clinical Infectious Diseases found that half of grocery store meat tested harbored staph bacteria. 
The researchers, uh, they ID the overuse of antibiotics in industrial uh, agriculture as the major cause of the rise in superbugs in our grocery grocery stores. Now, superbugs are bacteria or bugs that aren't responding to traditional drugs that we use. And so the, 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 the journal, Clinical Infectious Disease, is basically saying that we're using so many antibiotics in our food right now that the viruses, the germs, the bacteria are mutating. They're becoming these superbugs. And that's real dangerous because when you do need the antibiotics, they may not work. A family member of mine had an infection in her knee, and the doctor replaced the knee, and he just, call it what it is, he butchered her knee. Nine surgeries in one year, and then he said, well, why don't we just cut the leg off? And she said, no, 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 it's still a good leg. Why are you cutting it off? He says, well, you have this infection, and we can't get rid of it. And so if we cut the leg off, she said, well, what if the infection's in my body? He says, well, then it'll spread through your body. I thought that was a little cold, personally, and he's the one that messed up the knee, a simple knee replacement. But anyway, she has to take antibiotics now for the rest of her life just to keep this uh, potential. You can't even, don't even know if it's there or not in check. So what happens is the antibiotics kill the good bacteria in the body as well as the bad bacteria in the body. And if the b- good bacteria start to die off, the bad bacteria can start to take over, and that's when you have a problem. You always want more good than bad. It's okay to have a balance, but more good than bad. When it switches, that's when your immune system really goes crazy. So let's talk about MRSA. MRSA kills about 19,000 people in America each year. That's more annual deaths than AIDS. Uh, and the U.S. And the US is purchasing... Uh, these toxic chemicals that are often found in commercial meat. So if you start purchasing things like organic meats, organic eggs, organic dairy products, you're not going to have these antibiotics in there. So if you're going to eat animal products, I strongly advise you do organic only. And from what I understand, they taste better too. I know fruits and vegetables taste better if they're organic. But this is one of the reasons I don't eat meat because there's too much risk. I loved meatball sandwiches. I loved double beef cheese hamburgers and, and spare ribs. Last meal I ever ate, uh, December 25th, 1986, I had spare ribs. That was the last meat I had. And they were delicious. I'm not going to lie to you. However, I also now know about what happens to the animals, how they're raised, the ethical issues behind it. But my point originally was strictly nutrition. I want to get healthy. And we were just putting all this junk in, in the 80s. It just started turning. That's when we started coming out with genetically modified foods. We started using things like glyphosate, uh, which is a weed killer, and we spray it on so many foods right now, and that causes a lot of problems as well. You're having these reactions um, to the glyphosate. We spray it on wheat now. This is a kind of relatively new thing. Spray it on the wheat crop to kill the wheat so it's easier to harvest. Once the wheat is dead, it's easier to harvest, but the glyphosate and other chemicals are still on the wheat, so... So, folks, got to go to a break. If you have a question, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. If you have questions, you can call us or send, send me questions through the website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter. It's free. We never give out your information, and we send you lots of good information there as well. The website uh, for anything you need, drjoesposito.com. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Come. Hey, don't. Hey, folks, glad you could be here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. We're talking about some fun stuff today. We're talking about the grossest things that you're eating, and we got a lot to cover here. Um, So I want to keep going. Uh, Herbicide-flavored foods. Now, we talk a lot about glyphosate. That's a weed killer, very common. In fact, if you have weed killer at your house, if you spray it around your shrubs or whatever, chances are it's glyphosate. And if you ever read the directions on glyphosate, it's pretty clear. It clearly says... Uh, don't spray, don't inhale it, you know, don't be downwind from it, don't let your dogs, your pets, your kids near it, don't eat it if it's in your mouth, it gets in your eye, wash, call poison control. And it's an active chemical ingredient, and it's really popular, but it's a hormone-disrupting chemical, and now it's used a lot on genetically modified corn and soy. Because what happens is with GMO food, genetically modified organism is what GMO stands for, GMO foods is they, they do one of two things. Number one is they're, they're, they're resistant to glyphosate. So what that means is we can spray the weed killer on the plant. It doesn't kill the plant, the corn, the soy, the, the, the rapini is another one. Uh, they're doing uh, uh, pineapples now, papayas, a lot of different foods are going genetically modified, which I'm not happy with. And we can spray it on the plant. It kills the weeds, but it doesn't kill the plant. Okay. That's pretty good. Sounds like a good idea. The problem is that we don't wash off these toxic chemicals. Or they they make genetically modified foods that make their own pesticides. So if a bug eats the plant, it'll die. So basically it it, it becomes its own poison. 
Either way, I'm not happy with it because we're altering, you know, there's a commercial years ago that says it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Well, we're messing with Mother Nature here. And a lot of these foods that are GMO uh, are showing up as problems with people and with farmers that feed it to their animals. It's being detected in streams, air, even rain. Uh, it's a systemic herbicide, which means it's taken up by the plant as well. It goes into the plant, so you eat it. It's legally allowed in your food. Uh, the amount that we're using does worry a lot of scientists, myself included. It's found in most non-organic packaged foods because most of them contain corn or soy um, uh, derivatives. If you ever read the ingredients, corn and soy are pretty big. So glyphosate exposure is linked to things like obesity, learning disabilities, birth defects, infertility, and potentially irreversible metabolic damage. And you want to avoid pesticides in products, and you do that by eating more organic foods and foods that are processed as little as possible. Now, you want to use the word organic because I had somebody come in the other day and I go, Dr. Joe, I eat uh, uh, cage-free eggs. I said, okay, are they fed organic food? Well, it's cage-free, so it's organic. No, 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 two different things. If it doesn't have the big O on it, if it doesn't have organic on it, it's not organic. It's just that simple. Now, some foods can be organic, but farms have to go through a process of being certified. So even though they are organic, they haven't gotten a certification yet, so they can't officially say they're organic. And that's why going to a farmer's market, if you have them in your area, is a good idea because you can talk to the farmers. Hopefully, they're telling you the truth. And they can say, we're in a tra transition right now. We're, you know, third year in or whatever it is. And you can say, all right, well, this is going to be a much better, better food. Another fun thing, we're talking about gross foods that you're eating, and this is a fun one. I talked about this years ago and haven't reported it in a while. How about this? How would you like to have ice cream that has beaver anal gland juice in it? Mmm, that sounds tasty. It's a bitter, smelly, orange-brown substance. It's known as a uh, castorium. And in nature, it's combined with beaver urine, and it's used to mark their territory. Well, some Ahmad's rubbing his stomach there. You've eaten it. I tell you what, you've eaten it, Ahmad. <laughs> what is it again? Beaver what? Beaver anal gland juice. Yummy. So beaver butt is what it's from. Mm. And it's used extensively in processed foods and beverage, typically as, as vanilla or raspberry flavoring. So next time you see something that has vanilla or raspberry flavoring, it may have beaver butt. Now, this gross ingredient is not going to show up on the label, of course. Uh, instead, companies uh, use it in making processed foods, and they list it as natural flavoring. Now, this poses a dilemma not only for the gross factor, but people that are vegetarians and vegans or anyone who wants to avoid uh, anal excretion in their food. So it's there, and it's, it's probably in the food you've eaten it. So if you've eaten something flavored vanilla or raspberry, beaver butt. Now, here's my question. Who figured that out? <laughs> That's a good question. Who was the first person? I'm thinking about cow's milk. Who's the first person to say, hmm, there's an udder. I'm going to squeeze this. <laughs> and whatever comes out, I'm putting it on my cereal. This should be fun. <laughs> they were all strung out on aspartame and glyphosate and all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to squeeze a cow udder. So, but I don't know who figured out evil uh, be, be, beaver anal gland juice <laughs> tastes like vanilla. But it's there, folks. Fits the topic today. Gross things you're eating. Hormones in milk. Today's cows produce a double amount of milk, uh, more than double amount than they did just 40 years ago. And that's largely due to genetic engineering, synthetic hormones uh, that are used. And one of them is called recombinant somatotrophic bovine growth hormone, or RBST, recombinant bovine somatotropin. So this is a hormone we give to cows to produce more milk. Now, the problem is when we give the cow this hormone, they produce more milk. Good. Sounds like a good idea. But what happens is the udders can actually become engorged with milk and can start to tear. And if the udders start to tear, chances are they're going to become infected. If they become infected, what do we give the cows? Antibiotics. What did we cover 10 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago, whatever it was? Antibiotic-resistant bacteria that we have now in the world, like MRSA, that are killing 19,000 people a year. More people that die from that than die from AIDS. And so this is one of the contributing factors, is that the more infections an animal has, the more antibiotics we give it, the more antibiotics we give it, the more it gets into our food. So this, these sex hormones from the cows, you're probably drinking it. Now, it could be in milk that's not organic or not labeled uh, BST-free. Scientists link uh, recombinant uh, bovine somatotrophin to prostate, breast, and colon cancers. It's banned in a lot of countries, although it's legal here, unfortunately. Many dairies are moving away from it because of consumer demand. People like you are saying, I don't want it. 
And another thing, this is another, Dr. Joe was right column. I got to talk about this. I saw a commercial the other day for A2 milk. And A2 milk, there's, there's two types of proteins that animals, the cows produce, A1 and A2. And a lot of people have reactions to the A1 protein, but don't have reactions to the A2 protein. And I talked about this a while ago. There's a certain breed of cows that produce the A2 protein. And just the other day, I saw a commercial, and it said A2 protein. Finally, I can drink cow's milk without the reactions. Now, you may still be re- reacting to lactose and other chemicals and hormones in the milk, but I reported on this years ago, and now it's made it to mainstream. And in fact, a friend of mine called me up, and she said, I had to borrow milk from a friend of mine for her grandson, and they said, well, it's A1 milk. And she said, okay. And she took it home, and she called me up, and she said, what's A1 milk? She had never even heard of it before. And I said, well, it's A1 and A2. So, um, But that's, we'll put that in again, the Dr. Joe was right column. But there's other things in the milk aside from the A1 and the A2 proteins like lactose. Okay, you need an enzyme called lactase to break down lactose. And we as humans don't produce lactase. And some people are much more sensitive than others. And that's why you have a lot of milk allergies. So a lot of dairies are moving away from it. And I, I just heard this story the other day on another radio station um, about chickens and how they're really getting away from using antibiotics with chickens. And they're going back to old methods like sunlight feeding them oregano, things that are natural antibiotics in the chicken. So that made me very, very happy um, to hear that public demand, people like you and me are just saying, I'm not going to buy it. And so now a lot of the the chicken farm is going away from it. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a question, the number here is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com, because I think all of you should be taking, most of you anyway, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the minimum amount of nutrients you need every single day to combat a lot of this junk that you're getting in your diet. So that's on the website. It's also available on Amazon. Uh, a lot of good information there. Try it. I think you'll be very happy with it. For what you, the cost and what you're getting is really good. If you have other questions, uh, you can call us, 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, got to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Uh, tell your friends about the show. Hey, folks, glad you could be here. I am Dr. Joe Esposito talking today about some of the grossest foods that you eat on a daily basis. And a lot of you are doing it, unfortunately, and I wish you wouldn't because some of them can be causing some real serious health issues. And, you know, I said earlier we got a couple of callers from people with kidney problems. And 32 years ago when I first started in practice, I I, I don't think I ever saw a kidney patient. And now we see them sometimes several times a week. And so I don't know what's going on. And I see autism on the rise. And I remember when I was a kid, autism was one in 6,000 people, depending on a study, one in six to one in 10,000. So let's be conservative, one in 6,000. Now it's one in 45. Something's different. Something's wrong. And no one seems to be talking about it. Well, yeah, it's there and it's a shame, but eh, what are you going to do? So a lot has changed in the past 30, 40 years. And so look at that and say, what is different now than then? And what can we do to go back to the old ways? Sounds like a Star Trek or a Star Wars uh, statement there. Go back to the old ways. Because some of the things we're doing are just amazing. MRIs and CAT scans and surgeries are just crazy how much they've come along and how advanced they are. Medicine blows my mind. But now in the process of this evolution, we're killing ourselves. This generation of children is the first generation ever to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents by five years. That's pretty crazy stuff, five years. So isn't that how we win the game? We live longer? And we're not doing that. We're living less. And we don't have a health care crisis, folks. We have a sick care crisis. Nobody's talking about getting well. Everybody's talking about who's going to pay for it when we're sick. So let's approach it from a different angle. Let's just say that we get the country healthy. And then we do need help. You need doctor's care. There's going to be better doctors available to you because doctors are going to want to see patients because right now it's getting crazy. And every doctor I know, every one of them, they talk about one thing. When can I retire? How am I getting out of this mess? What else can I do to make a living? Because it's not, and many times it's not even able to make a living as a doctor anymore. You went to school for 8, 10, 12 years. And so what's going to happen, regardless of what happens in the political world, what's going to happen? We just don't have enough doctors around to take care of you. You're going to have to start taking care of yourself. And now is the time to start. And in order to have health, you have to have a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. Those are the three things. That's the core of a healthy person. And when it comes to nutrition, staying away from what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. 
eating more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, eating things like your grandparents ate, at least supplementing with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day. That's the core nutrients that your body needs. Then with our patients, and we can do this on, on the internet now too or over the phone. If you, if you, I know the show's heard coast to coast. If you're not near any of my offices, we can always set up a consultation over the phone where we do a nutritional workup on you. And I'll say, hey, listen, change this, do that, add some other supplements to the diet. I supplement every day. I take a handful of supplements every single day, and I take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I think you should too. And those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can get it there too. So let's cover a few more things, uh, horrible, disgusting things you're eating. I'm going to skip a few here. I want to get to the gross ones. How about human hair and feathers? How would you like to eat human hair and feathers? L-cysteine, it's a non-essential amino acid, and it's made from either dissolved human hair, oftentimes from China, or duck feathers. I don't want to eat duck feathers. It's used as a commercial dough conditioner to improve the texture of breads and baked goods. So you may not be buying it, but you may be eating it when you eat commercial uh, breads. Now, eating something derived from human hair violates, of course, certain gross factors, but also it violates the Muslim beliefs. You can't eat human flesh. I don't know why the other religions don't have that either. Uh, hair and duck feathers pose an ethical dilemma for people like me who don't eat animal products. So the way we do that is you can bake your own breads or, better yet, don't eat bread. Because bread is just like eating pure sugar. Even if you make it yourself and if you're going to do it, at least do organic. Please, I'm begging you do organic because it can't have <laughs> human hair or duck feathers in it. But I really want you to consider trying to get bread out of your life. Now, I know you're mad at me for saying that because nobody wants to give up bread. I'm Italian. I remember when I first realized this many, many years ago, how bad bread is for you. I fought it back and forth. And I said, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And then I finally got to the point where I don't eat bread, and boy, I felt so much better. And many times if you're eating wheat, it has something called gluten, and gluten is a protein. It's found in wheat, barley, and rye, and gluten contains gluten and gliadin, don't worry about the chemistry. And when it gets into the body, the immune system attacks these proteins because it's a foreign protein. And when it attacks the foreign protein, the lining of your colon, some of the cells look a lot like gluten. So the immune system sometimes isn't as sophisticated as it should be and starts attacking your own colon. And that's when people start having allergic reactions and swelling. And that swelling can go systemic. It can get into your brain and cause brain fog. And so it's not a good thing for many reasons, but it's just pure sugar. You're eating pure sugar. Why would you want to be eating pure sugar? Because it tastes good. That's why. I know. But try to avoid breads if you can. If you're going to do it, at least do organic or better yet, make it, uh, make it yourself. And we said earlier that a lot of times wheat now, they're spraying Roundup, uh, spraying uh, on, on the product. And that gets into the body. And when that gets into the body, it disrupts the hormones. So we got a problem there. Because the glyphosate chemicals can cause hormone disruption. So you got to be careful with that. So organic, they can't use the glyphosate on it. So that's a good thing. Um, but if you don't do it, you're not getting low sugars. How about crushed bugs? There's something called carmine. It's a bright red food colorant. And it's actually the crushed abdomen of a female African beetle-like insect. So when you eat things that are brightly colored red, things like red candies, red tinted yogurts, juices, particularly these ruby red juices, it's often listed as carmine, C-R-M-I-N-E, Crimson Lake, uh, co Conconale, I guess it's pronounced, and Natural Red Number 4. These are usually ground up beetles. Mmm, so that's pretty tasty then, isn't it? Yeah. Not only is it thought to be a gross thing about eating bugs, but it poses an ethical question again for people that don't eat animal products. So if you don't want to eat ground up beetles, this is something you might want to avoid. And many times, uh, as we start to run out of time, you know what, L let me say this first, and if I have more time, I'll cover it. If you missed today's show, you missed a great show. But we're going to put it on our website, which is drjoesposito.com, which is Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And you can listen to this and hundreds of hours of radio shows. I videotape my live lectures, so come out to my live lectures. They are a lot of fun. And just check my website for my lecture schedule. Love to have you come out. Most of them are no charge. Sometimes corporations hire me, and I can't invite you. If you're not doing anything else, at least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, please. It's the minimum amount of nutrients that you need. Those are on my website, drjoesposito.com. Google Dr. Joe. Send me questions through the website if I didn't get you on the air today. Um, if, if, if Amazon also carries out products. If you have an Amazon account, we want the opportunity to help get you well 
and keep you well. Folks, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Tell your friends about the show. We really appreciate you being here. Catch you next time. You being here.